The city of brotherly love now facing a nearly 12% increase in homicides from January 1st to late November. This year, per capita, we have someplace worse than Chicago, okay? Where is it? It's called Philadelphia. Philly is like damn near the murder capital now. It's always been crazy, but it seems like it's as it's, it's worse as it's ever been. You know, in Philly uh, last year, almost 600 people uh, were killed. How much does rap have to do with that in Instagram? I say, I say 75% of that. Do you feel like you're the most hated right now? I know I'm the most hated. Niggas really deal with like pain when they lose their homies and shit. So, you mean that shit like a mixture of pain, you feel me? And just wanting to be some, looking up to a certain group of people. So, I don't know. To be honest, bro, I probably done lost like 19 Bro, no bullshit, bro. Tonight, a tragic milestone as we mark 500 lives lost to violence across the city of Philadelphia so far this year. And there are still 36 days left in 2021. Over the past decade, drugs become a worldwide phenomena spread into major cities across the world. In recent years, one scene in particular has been drawing a lot of comparisons to the original Chicago scene. London and New York have two of the most famous drug movements outside of Chicago, but both of these cities have very strict laws around firearms, and New York has the highest police presence of any place in the world. Chicago drill was partly a result of the fact that it was like the wild wild west when it came to committing crimes. When it comes to the policing style in the city, Philadelphia very closely mirrors Chicago and this has allowed Philly drillers to wreak destruction over the past couple years. Their drill movement kicked off around 2019 and the homie rate spiked in 2020. It's unlikely that drill was the sole reason behind this jump, but it has definitely played a large role in instigating the violence. The scene is still relatively underground, but there are a lot of rappers buzzing with music videos over a million views. The music is literally tied to the things going on in the streets and many of the rappers are the same ones doing the hits, then going and rapping about it in songs. And the craziness of the situation has drawn fans in to watch the story unfold in real time. So in this video, we'll take a look at the story of Philly Drill. Before we get started, these videos do take a lot of time to research and put together. So if you haven't, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Now let's get into the video. When outsiders think of Philadelphia, they think of the generic branding the city receives from television, like being the city of brotherly love or the home of Rocky and Philly cheesesteaks. But for decades, the city has been a rough and violent place. This violence dates back to its early days as a major city in the United States. The city has faced challenges related to crime and violence for decades, particularly in certain neighborhoods characterized by poverty, illegal substances, and gang activity. Factors such as the lack of economic opportunities and the easy availability of firearms have contributed to the constant violence in the city. It was these tough conditions that produced plenty of musical talent going back as far as the 80s when Will Smith came out as a rapper through the 90s with groups like State Property, The Roots, and Major Figures. The 2000s with artists like Cassidy, A.R. App, and Meek Mill. And the mid-10s when Lil Uzi and PNB Rock came out with different sounds representing a new age of Philly. With the transition from the days of the dark, aggressive sound of Beanie Siegel to the fun, melodic Uzi sound, an outsider might think this was a reflection of the city getting less rough and to an extent, that would be true. The crime rates did experience a decline from the 90s to the mid-10s, but violence still remained a significant issue in many areas. And in 2020, all this progress would be erased and the homie rate would skyrocket again. And just like in the 90s, this new wave of violence would have a hip-hop movement to accompany it. And this movement was Philly Drill. One of the first rappers from this new era of Philly music was Leaf Ward. A West Philly native. In 2018, he dropped a song called They Forgot that ended up taking off on SoundCloud and convincing him to take music seriously. They Forgot 2 was his first song with a music video, 
and this record also saw a lot of success. And Leaf continued to drop consistently and establish himself on the scene. Going into 2019, the Philly scene really took off and several West Philly artists dropped songs that went on to pass a million views. The biggest story of the entire year was Sim Santana, a West Philly rapper who dropped a song called Flexin' and Flashin' in April of 2019. The song immediately began taking off, racking up 100,000 views in a matter of days. The whole summer, the song continued to blow up, taking Sim Santana from being unknown to the hottest underground artist in Philadelphia. Sim was a part of a neighborhood called D4M, and there were two other rappers in the group called Sloan and Skiano. The three of them collaborated frequently, so after Sim blew up, they quickly began to take off as well. Around the same time Sim and D4M were blowing up, more West Philly rappers were seeing success as well. Up into 2019, Low Bucks and One Mirror were relatively unknown. Then in April, they dropped a song called We Spinning. They ended up blowing them up, racking up several hundred thousand views. They continued the motion dropping We Spinning 2 a month later. Then they teamed up with Sloan and Skiano on a record called Come Outside that also did numbers. So in 2019, Sam Santana, D4M Sloan, and Skiano, Low Bucks, and One Mirror all joined Leaf Ward as the faces of the new movement in Philly. On a smaller scale, an artist called Young Liv, aka Livy, also got a buzz in the city after dropping a song called Dead Ops that took off. But his buzz wasn't as big as D4M or Lil Bucks and Mir. Unfortunately, later in 2019, Lil Bucks would end up getting booked and have to sit in jail for several months. And for the next couple years, he would continue to find himself in and out of jail slowing his career down. In 2020, Sim Santana and the other D4M rappers Crazy Buzz from 2019 began to die down. Then in July, the group experienced tragedy when Skiano had his life taken at the young age of 18. D4M would never reach the heights they saw at the top of the Philly scene in 2019, but throughout 2020, more big names made their way onto the Philly scene. One of the biggest names to come out this year was OT7 Kwani. He didn't have a breakout hit, but all throughout the year, his music was taking off. One of his biggest early songs making noise was Dead Rappers. He was also featured on a popular Lil Bucks and One Mere song called Halftime. Kwani continued dropping, remaining consistent, and by the end of the year, he was the second biggest underground artist behind Lee Ford. Kwani was part of a neighborhood alliance called Zoo Gang, and this group had another prominent rapper called Poundside Pop. Pop initially blew up in 2017 off a song called OSS that was similar to the melodic style PNB took to the mainstream around that time. Pop's music had remained melodic, but he still talked about violence and beef like all of the other rappers in the New Philly movement. He and Kwani would team up frequently to put on for Zoo Gang and take shots at their ops. Zoo Gang beefed with another neighborhood alliance called Black Flags, and this group had several rappers. One of the most known was Sha Glizzy. He had a few songs, but he got his name for being active in the streets, and this had led to him being one of Zoo Gang's most hated ops. In July of 2020, they were able to get to him and claim his life, and after his passing, he became one of the main people the Zoo rappers dissed. Sha had been a part of a set called NLB, under the Black Flags umbrella, but the main hood in Black Flags was Blumberg, which was the home to rappers like Blumberg G's and Blumberg Ear. Blumberg was allied with a group called Five Up, and this group had a rapper called Five Up Nooski. Nooski, G's, and Ear collaborated frequently and built up a buzz in 2020, putting on for the Black Flags and traded distance with Zoo Gang. The most successful rapper to come from Black Flags was Hood Tally. Hood Tally, known as GG at the time, was a rapper from the Germantown area of Philadelphia who started buzzing after dropping a song called Exotic in February of 2020. He continued his momentum dropping more and more music videos, doing numbers, and he was also heavy on the social media antics and constantly dissed and trolled his ops on Instagram. Hood Famous J 
was another rapper on similar timing with the dissing and social media antics. He was from an area called The Pit that beef with D4M and he dissed members from this group as well as their deceased often. In 2020, he started his career quickly gaining attention. Despite all these new rappers coming out onto the scene, B4 remained the hottest and early into the year, he dropped They Forgot 3 and it quickly ran up millions, becoming not only his biggest song, but the biggest song to come out the Philly underground in years. From the beginning of the new era to 2020, the main rappers had been established, along with multiple different sides of the mini beefs going on, and disses were being traded back and forth, so all the requirements were there to classify what was happening as a drill scene. But 2021 was the first year people started to categorize everything going on in the city as a single movement. This was the first year people started using the term Philly drill, and channels began covering the beef going on. The most covered conflict was the war on the north side between Zoo Gang and Black Flags, with Zoo rappers like OT7 Kwani, Poundside Pop, and Arbor, and Diamond Street Keem going back and forth with Black Flag rappers like Hood Tally, Five Up Nooski, and Bloomberg G's and Ear. Lil Bucks was part of a group called O to the Four, also known as Campers, which was located in West Philly, but the group was clicked up with Zoo Gang and also had beef up in North Philly with Bloomberg and the other Black Flags neighborhoods. O to the Four also beefed with a hood in West Philly called YBC. Young Lives neighborhood 56th Street, aka Clappers, also had beef with YBC, so Bucks and Liv dissed them regularly. In 2021, YBC rappers like F5, Reek1200, and J100 would begin rapping, becoming the voice for their side, dissing their rivals like O to the 4 and 56th Street. Meanwhile, also in West Philly, the beef between D4M and The Pit raged on, with Hood Famous J dissing often and Sloan and Sim Santana responding occasionally. The beefs between groups like The Zoo, Black Flags, D4M, The Pit, YBC, and O to the Four were the main conflicts going on on the music scene, but they were far from the only conflicts in the city. In 2021, we see the rise of another artist putting a spotlight on another conflict. G12 Za was a rapper from North Philly who initially began buzzing after dropping a song called Outside that began to take off in late 2020. He was part of a group called G12, closely allied with another neighborhood called M24, beefing with two hoods called LV and Parkside. Za had a completely different style from all the other Philly artists because he made slower melodic songs that were almost more singing than rapping, similar to Polo G style. However, despite this singing melodic style, Zah dissed his ops frequently, leading many to still classify him as a trail rapper. Going into 2021, he was showing potential, and throughout the year, he dropped big songs that got his name up in discussions. In April, he dropped a song called Gangsta Party that blew up, passing a million views, becoming his biggest song, and making him one of the biggest underground artists in the city. Gangsta Party also featured another rapper called NSU Shido. Shido was also from North Philly, but he was a member of the Black Flags. Similar to Za, Shido also had a melodic style that set him apart from most other Philly artists. From 2020, he had started to buzz, and in 2021, he and G12 Za had several big collaborations that took him to the next level. However, in September of 2021, Shido nearly lost his life one night when he was riding with a friend. Ops pulled up, firing into a car he was riding in, and hit him in the head twice. Miraculously, he would survive, but the friend he was riding with wasn't so fortunate. Shido ended up making a strong recovery and dropping the pain song, speaking on the whole experience, and his career continued to grow. Shido and G12Za had found their own separate lane, but in 2021, the rest of the city was beginning to find a unified sound. Ever since 2019, Detroit had been on fire, and their sound had been spreading all across the country. In 2021, Philly rappers hopped on the wave. Up into 2021, new era Philly rappers had been rapping on the southern style simple piano beats popularized by Splurge and NLE Chopper. But in 2021, most Philly rappers turned towards the Detroit sound as their primary choice for beats 
and this became the new sound of Philly Drill. Going into 2022, rappers continued to get even more disrespectful, and even more new rappers began popping out. Early into the year, a North Philly rapper called Berg Street Man Man began buzzing. His songs, like What the F Off the Map and Get Over, were doing numbers, and he appeared to have potential. Man Man was a part of the zoo gang and heavy into the beef. In May, he decided to take the disrespect to another level when he recorded one of the most disrespectful songs in Philly history, then shot the video in his op's hood. This move worked and got him the attention he was looking for, but just three days after it dropped, his ops would end up catching him and taking his life. A situation almost identical to what happened to Lil Mark almost eight years prior when he dropped No Competition. After Man Man's passing, Hood Tally, Blumberg G's, and many of his other ops began dissing him regularly, and the situation generated a lot of attention, becoming one of the biggest stories of the year. Another big story in 2022 was the rise of YBC Duel. Many call YBC the most hated group in Philadelphia, and Duel began his rap career with the goal to be the most hated rapper in the city. From the beginning, he constantly dissed deceased members from all the groups YBC beefed with. He did so much that he literally gave himself the title Mr. Disrespectful. If you've seen any other videos about Drill on this channel, you know that the fans gravitate towards dissing, and when there's already a poppin' Drill scene, Dropping super disrespectful songs is basically a cheat code. YBC Duel began his career dropping his first song in January of 2022, and by October he started blowing up after an extremely disrespectful song called So Many Names started going viral. He continued dropping regularly and ended the year as one of the biggest artists on the Philly drill scene. Duel collaborated frequently with rappers from other groups clicked up with YBC, and this helped to give shine to rappers like Cop Out Blick, FS The Bender, and Mir Pablo. YBC was blowing up on the music scene, but they were losing members the whole year. In May, they lost an up-and-coming rapper called Baby Ka, then in June, they lost another called Da Fetty, and in December, a YBC rapper called J100, who was actually the founder of the gang, we end up getting his life taken. Also in December, O to the Four was hit with an indictment that put five of their members behind bars. Around this time, they also decided to click up with the Clappers from 56th Street, as well as the Clappers from 7th Street in South Philly, and unite under the name CCK, which stood for Campers, Clappers, Clappers. From 2022 to 2023, not much changed. Leaf Ward, OT7 Kwani, Lil Bucks, G12 Za, YBC Duel, and Hood Tally continue to lead the scene. Hood Tally relaxed slightly on the disrespect, but Lil Bucks continued dissing heavily and so did YBC Duel and the rest of his crew. Leaf Ward and OT7 Kwani were mainly focused on grinding and putting out good music. As always, the constant theme of violence continued in the city. Bloomberg G's had been on the run since December of 2022 when he was charged for booming a zoo member known as Lil Ranger. He had managed to avoid authorities for months, but in June of 2023, when he became another name on the long list of Philly rappers who met the same fate. Then in July, a CCK rapper called Deke Loco also became a casualty of this never-ending cycle. This brings us to the present day. The Philly scene has seen a lot of chaos, destruction, and tragedy leaving many grieving families. The music is thriving for now, but with the amount of attention rappers are getting, there's no telling who has indictments waiting around the corner. If they can stay alive and free, some of these rappers have the potential to touch the mainstream, but we'll just have to wait and see.